100 years ago, 32 ACP was quite possibly the most popular semi-automatic pistol cartridge in the world. It was developed by John Browning for the FN Model 1900, which was the first ever production pistol to feature a reciprocating slide. 32 ACP quickly caught on, especially in Europe, where it is typically known as 7.65 Browning. During the first half of the 20th century, 32 caliber pistols were among the most common sidearms for police and military in Europe. Here in the US, we used larger caliber handguns in those roles, but compact 32 pistols were still successfully marketed to civilians for self-defense. Semi-autos like the Savage Model 1907 and the Colt 1903 Pocket Hammerless were some of the most common pocket guns. They were a bit larger than what we think of as a pocket pistol today. They were more like coat pocket pistols, but that was still considered small by early 1900 standards. It's easy to see the appeal of these old 32s. It's a light recoiling cartridge and when you load it in a steel framed pistol with a single action trigger, it's incredibly easy to shoot. Despite that appeal, the popularity of 32 ACP gradually declined in the second half of the 1900s, and that's a trend that continues today. Pocket pistols are still big sellers, but now 380 ACP is by far the dominant cartridge. According to the ATF in 2007, there was roughly one 32 ACP pistol made in the US for every three pistols chambered for 380. Since then, the popularity of 380 has exploded, while 32 has dwindled to almost nothing. In 2017, for every one 32 pistol made, there were 100 380s. Almost every major firearms manufacturer now offers at least one 380 pocket pistol. Only two of them still make one for 32 ACP the Keltec P32 and the Beretta 3032 Tomcat. There are also a couple of 32s offered by smaller companies like the North American Arms Guardian and the Seacamp LWS. There might be some others, but if you're thinking about carrying a 32 ACP pocket pistol that's in current production, it's most likely one of the four I just mentioned. I've spent some time recently shooting the Keltec P32 and the NAA Guardian. I've handled the other two, but I don't have any range time with them. The Beretta Tomcat is essentially a 32 caliber version of the Bobcat 21A. So it's a double action, single action with the tip up barrel feature. They've been around since the mid 1990s. There were some problems with the slides cracking on the early guns. Beretta beefed up the slides, which seemed to fix the problem, but now they're just kind of wide and heavy for a gun this small. They're almost twice the width of the Keltec and weigh half a pound more. They might be good shooters, but I think most people are gonna find them to be too heavy by modern pocket pistol standards. The Seacamp LWS is another somewhat older design, but it's slimmer and lighter than the Tomcat. In the 80s and 90s, Seacamp was making the smallest guns you could buy, and they made some innovations that kind of paved the way for the modern micro pistol. Just from handling one, my biggest gripe with the Seacamp is that it has no sights. Not even bad ones, just no sights at all. I know a lot of people still believe a small gun like this doesn't need sights, but it is 2019. The efficacy of training with sights and using them in real shootings when necessary has been well documented. There is no good reason for a modern handgun to omit them completely. The NAA Guardian shares some superficial similarities with the Seacamp pistols, although it is slightly larger and heavier. It's a double action only design with a stainless steel slide and frame, which makes it feel dense compared to a polymer frame pistol. Despite that, it is not a very fun pistol to shoot, at least not for me. The ergonomics are just off somehow. The tang of the grip is very low on the frame and that gives it an unusually high bore axis. The trigger pull is very long and heavy. It's not particularly reliable. It does have sights, but they're very small. You can pay NAA to cut dovetails into the top of the gun and install real sights. So that's one benefit of this model. But overall, based on my experience with this one, the Guardian combines just about all of the worst attributes a pocket pistol can have. The Keltec P32 is the lightest of the 32s. It actually may be the lightest semi-auto pistol in current production. It's seven ounces empty and 10 ounces fully loaded with eight rounds. It's not necessarily the smallest in every outer dimension, but it's certainly among the smallest pistols around. I know Keltec has developed a well-earned reputation for producing problematic firearms, but if there is any exception to that, 
It's the P32. They've been in production since 1999, which makes it one of Keltec's oldest designs. I think they've worked out most of the kinks by now. I've got about 700 rounds through this one, which is a fairly high round count by pocket pistol standards, and I've been really impressed with how reliable it's been. It doesn't run 100% with every type of ammo I've tried, but it seems to run just fine with Federal American Eagle and SNB full metal jacket loads. The trigger pull on the P32 is fairly long, but it's light at about seven pounds. The grip texture is very aggressive. I've got this Packmeyer grip sleeve on here that helps with that, and it also fills my hand a little bit better, makes it easier to get a firm grip on the gun. This belt clip here is another aftermarket add-on. It makes it possible to carry the gun without a holster. One more option I like is the factory extended 10 round magazine. It gives the gun a full grip that's uh, easier to draw if you want a very light gun but don't necessarily need the smallest possible footprint. The weakest feature of the P32 is the sights. They are very small, very difficult to see. You get a little tiny nub here in the front and this notch in the rear. I've blacked out all of this rear portion and I put some orange nail polish on the front so I can actually see the sights. Fortunately for me, this gun tends to point really naturally, so the sights are usually more or less aligned whenever I bring it up to eye level. If that doesn't work for you, Crimson Trace does make a laser guard for this gun. So even though it's far from the ideal gun, if I was looking for the smallest and lightest carry gun possible that I could still shoot reasonably well, I would probably carry the P32. One more thing to look out for is the rim lock issue, but this is something that can happen with any pistol in this caliber. 32 ACP is considered a semi-rimmed cartridge, which means that the diameter of the rim is slightly wider than the case body. So in the magazine, the cartridges are supposed to sit on top of each other, kind of like that, where the rim of the top cartridge rests in the recess of the case below it. But if the first round on top gets behind the next round in the mag, that first round will get hung up by its rim and the gun will not cycle until you take out the magazine and fix it. I set up a rim lock in this magazine here and watch what happens when I try to chamber around. The slide, it will not close because this top round is essentially locked in place and it's blocking the slide from going forward. Generally, you can avoid this just by loading your magazines very carefully. And with full metal jacket ammo, I have found it almost impossible to set up a rim lock in the kel even on purpose. But with hollow point ammo, there is some extra room in the magazine from front to back, and that makes a rim lock malfunction a lot more likely. So that's just one of the reasons why if I was gonna carry this pistol or any 32, I would probably load it with full metal jacket ammo. Between the rim lock issue, the meager selection of pistols, and the supposedly weaker ballistics, the 32 ACP is not looking too good so far compared to a pocket 380. You do tend to get one or two more rounds of ammo capacity in a 32, but the real advantage I haven't really addressed yet is the reduced recoil. So is there really enough of a difference in recoil between a 32 and a 380 to have any significant impact on how well I can shoot them? To find out, I did some side-by-side -side testing at the range with a Smith & Wesson bodyguard, which I tend to shoot a little better than most of the other pocket 380s. Once again, I decided to use the five by five drill as a way to measure performance. That's five shots at five yards into a five inch circle in under five seconds from a low ready position. The kel was definitely more pleasant to shoot, but timers don't lie. With the kel P32, my average time out of five runs was 2.12 seconds. With the Bodyguard 380, I averaged 2.3 seconds. So there is a difference, but it's not what I would call a significant difference. But that's just for me, for someone who is inexperienced or not a very skilled shooter or someone who is very recoil sensitive in general, the 32 would probably offer a much greater advantage. Those little 380s really are quite a handful. People talk about lightweight J-frame 38s being difficult to shoot well and not good for beginners, but honestly, I don't think an LCP or a bodyguard is a whole lot easier to manage. A small 32 at least has the potential to make that learning curve quite a bit easier. But of course, a lot of people are most concerned about the perceived lack of power of the 32 ACP compared to the alternatives. Unfortunately, just like we ran into when I covered the 32 revolver calibers, there is just not much data on how 32 ACP performs in real world defensive shootings. So again, let's take a look at some ballistic gel to give us a rough idea of what this round is capable of. This is just a quick informal test. We will be doing more testing of 32 ACP later on at the end of the series, along with all the other pocket pistol calibers. 
Starting with a couple of rounds of Spear Gold Dot, the average penetration depth was almost 11 inches. That's a little less than we'd like to see, and there was no expansion. That's really not a surprise, though. With small caliber hollow points, you typically get either good expansion or good penetration. Sometimes, like in this case, you get neither. They just don't have enough energy to expand and penetrate. Full metal jacket rounds are often recommended for mouse gun calibers because they at least have a decent chance of penetrating. So the next load we tried was Federal American Eagle Full Metal Jacket. The first round stopped at 15 and a half inches and the second round made it all the way to 20 inches. Technically that is over penetration, but with the smaller calibers, the reality is that the bullet is most likely gonna lose all of its energy by the time it exits the target. So shoot throughs are not a real concern. We tried one more jacket at a hollow point, this one from PMC. Again, there was no expansion, but the penetration was a little better than the gold dot with an average of 13 inches. That's deeper than the ideal 12 inch minimum that we're looking for, but I still think I prefer a full metal jacket in this caliber, especially considering the rim lock issue with the hollow points. A round nosed FMJ is not crushing a lot of tissue like we would see in the wound channel of a good penetrating hollow point but that's just a compromise you have to accept if you're gonna carry a small caliber pistol. Let's take a look at how these numbers compare to a few of the 380 loads from our tests a couple of years ago. Those tests were done with a Glock 42, which has a longer barrel than the kel so it's not a totally even comparison. The 380 Gold Dot had the same kind of shallow expansion as the 32 Gold Dot, except that it did expand. The Hornady Critical Defense was really the only 380 that had decent expansion and penetration but some of the tests I've seen with that load from shorter barrels were not so great. So if your gun launches those 380 hollow points with enough velocity to make them penetrate and expand, the 380 might have a bit of a ballistic advantage. On the other hand, if you're following the advice to carry FMJ ammo in a pocket pistol, it doesn't seem like there is much of a difference between a 380 and a 32. So my personal take on 32 ACP is that it has potential and it really is a shame that we don't have more options for both guns and ammo in this caliber. There might be 100 380s being sold for every 132, but at Lucky Gunner, the gap between these two calibers is not nearly as wide in terms of ammo sales. We sell about one round of 32 for every 11 or 12 rounds of 380. Now that's not proof of anything, but it does suggest that a lot of people are buying these little pocket 380s, but they're not shooting them. They are guns that require a lot of practice to master, and for the most part, people are not actually practicing with them because they're uncomfortable to shoot. If all of those 380s were instead 32s, I think more people would be getting trigger time with their carry guns. 